Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Hickman with Onfido, here today to talk about Onfido's template for Okta workflows. This template will allow you to quickly and easily create Onfido applicants based off the Okta create user event inside of workflows. So before we can get started, there's a few prerequisites that we need to get out of the way. Primarily, you need to have access to an Okta account that has the workflows uh, feature turned on. Additionally, you need to have an Onfido account be able to sign into our dashboard and generate API tokens. Once you have those prerequisites out of the way, you can dive into getting started with the workflow. The first thing that we need to make sure is available for this workflow to behave properly is to modify our profile, our default Okta profile to include uh, primarily one key element, which is a, a profile attribute that will be saved uh, containing the Onfido applicant ID. Here, if I look at my default Okta user profile, we'll see that I already have that profile created, uh, that, that, app, that, uh, that specific attribute. So you can see on Fido applicant ID, it's a type of string, it's added here. This is what the workflow will use to update that record. Now you don't have to use this specific name uh, here. As you see it, you can use whatever you'd like. Just note that you would have to modify the template to point to the right attribute once you have that placed in. Once you place that, once you have that in place, you can navigate to your workflows console. And at this point, you would have already implemented or imported your the the template uh, or selected the template from uh, the catalog. When you have that, there's some prerequisites as well with getting the workflow working. First and foremost, you need to create a connection. What the connection will do is allow you to set up an HTTP connection that has the authorization method already built in for Onfido. It's quite straightforward. You simply click on new connection. When you have new connection set up, you'll click on the HTTP. You'll give it some sort of name, such as something like Onfido, um, let's just call it connection. And from off type, you're gonna select custom. As the header name, you're gonna select authorization. And the header value is gonna be the word token with a capital T space token again with a lowercase t, the equal sign, and then whatever your Onfido API token value is. And remember to get that Onfido API token value, you simply navigate to the Onfido dashboard, click on developers, click on tokens, and generate an API token. Uh, this API token can only be seen once when you're generating it. So be sure to save it in a safe space if that's uh, necessary. Otherwise you can directly copy that token value place it straight into this connection and create that as needed. I happen to already have some connections built out that we can use as we're testing this integration here. So once I have that completed, I need to go and modify a few things inside of my flow to make sure that everything is working correctly because there are some customer dependent settings inside of here. Specifically, one item that I need to take a look at is the Onfido API URL. This is the base URL of the Onfido services, and it varies by what geographic region you're in. For instance, if you're in the US instance, you need to make sure the URL is api.us.onfido.com. If you're in the EU, it would be something like api.onfido.com. The V3 at the end is the version of the API. V3 is our current version. This could be updated as well if new versions come out uh, to allow you to, to dynamically change that as needed. Once you have that in place, everything else is fairly set for you and straightforward. You may want to construct more information for Onfido to handle, such as we're just collecting first name, last name, and email off the user created event. If you have other properties that Onfido is aware of, you can pl plug those in here to make sure that the request body has all the information you want Onfido to have about the user, such as things like date of birth uh, or address information that you may want Onfido to check as well. The flow then will capture and, and send a post uh, to the Onfido uh, endpoint, which will create the applicant. When that endpoint responds, it will return a object that has an ID in it. This ID is the Onfido applicant ID. And we can see here, if we look very closely, that our Onfido tenant is being, or our Okta tenant, I apologize, is being used. And it's using the user ID from the create user event. And it's updating the profile for that profile attribute that we created, the Onfido applicant ID. And it's pulling that out of the response body. One other thing that we need to check on is making sure that our HTTP post is using the proper connection. So you can see here, I'm using one called Onfido API. 
I can simply select the one that I created more recently, the Onfito connection or the Onfito wrapper, which is one that I have that's currently working. Once all these settings are together, we can go ahead and click save and all of our changes have been made. At this point, we're able to test this flow. There's a couple ways that we could do that. The first, we need to turn this flow on and it would be beneficial for us to go into the flow history and enable save data. That way we can look and see if there are any issues or if we have any incomplete data. When I navigate back to the flow here, if I use the test button here, I can fill out all the information for the create user event. This might be a little difficult to know all the specific information. There's a lot of properties in there. Uh, you can see a sample of this event in the Okta documentation, but an easier way to do this is to create a new user inside of Okta, which would trigger this because it's, it's keying off of that flow. Simply what we need to do is navigate back to our main Okta dashboard, go to people, and we can add a person here. And so in this case, I'll do something like my name, my username, I will use a throwaway email address that I have for this purpose. We'll call it Okta WF for Okta Workflows. And we can fill out any other information that we need here. I'm also just going to set a password now for this user just to make it easy if we need to log in in the future. And we'll save that user back. Now, once we've saved and added this user, this will actually trigger this flow. When this flow runs here, it will then call out, as we see when we wait for this to trigger, it will call out uh, to the Onfito uh, event, or so Onfito API, and it will trigger that piece. And we can see it here, the Okta connection is working, and we can see a success. So if we click on this, let's take a look and see what's happening specifically. First and foremost, we have the Okta user created event. We can see that it has a bunch of information, including uh, the user details. We're going to pull that specific Okta user ID and we're going to read a bit more about that user because we specifically want to know what the first name, last name, and email address are, which may or may not be in the actual event body. Because you can see here that there's a name field that concatenates the two and we want them separate just for a little bit easier of usage. We're then building the authentication and, and URL for the Onfido API. You can see that's being built here. You can see we're setting headers. We're building the object that we're going to be sending to Onfido. And then you can see the request happen here. And you can see all the details here as well as the response body if we scroll down. So we can see our response body at this point. And most specifically, what we're looking for is that ID string, which we can see them being used to update the Octa user. Another way to validate this is if we go back and we looked at that new user that we just created here, I find this user on this side. Let me just look for it. I need to refresh the screen. There we go. If I look at this new user here that we've created and I look at their profile, I can also see that in their profile, they have an applicant ID successfully created and saved. Uh, unfortunately, inside the Onfito dashboard, you would not see this applicant in the system uh, that, the reason for that is they have not actually executed any action with Onfito. It's kind of a placeholder start with. It's telling Onfito, hey, we're getting started. But hopefully this helps you understand how the Onfito template can work, how it can easily be used to set up and reduce some of the API overhead that you may have in your uh, customer integration or your consumer integration with your app, uh, and make the process flow seamlessly. Look forward to more templates coming from Onfito and Okta in the future. Hope you have a great day. Thank you very much.